Welcome viewers, it's James Calm here, half-assed guy on the bicycle, and today we're at 54 Ludlow Street, we're going to run into the Klaus von Wittsagen Gallery, and uh, well we're lucky because we're going to snag Gonzalez and get her to tell us about her show. Well, we were lucky we happened to catch you here relaxing on a Sunday afternoon. Tell us about the show, Tamara. Okay, um, the show's titled Omateo. Omateo, right? okay. And um, that's um, um, a Mexican name for creative energy. Oh, okay. Okay. Tell us about this piece. I actually. Uh, I kind of wanted to come up and lick this. It looks like a giant uh, chocolate uh, lollipop or something. <laughs> this is um, a maraca. It's a large maraca. Yeah, can I, you pick I, that up and <laughs> rattle it for us? <laughs> There's... You can. There's chickpeas right. inside. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want you to strain yourself. Okay, that's great. Um, but yes, it does also um, look a little bit like something edible. As you probably remember, I was a cake decorator as a teenager, so I put. You know, I, uh, I I missed that I, I missed that phase of your creative career here. Uh, we're going to come in and take a look at uh, what was for me was quite surprising. Here it was a nice little uh, gallery of weavings. Would you consider? I guess these are tapestries. Uh, these are yes. tapestries. Um, they were wo woven. Pisac, which is in Pisac, yeah, the Cusco region of Peru. Uh, I've been traveling there several times a year and making um, watercolors, which were work making their way into the paintings. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the drawings and watercolors a little later. And um, there's a rich textile tradition down there, so I brought some pictures with me and just you know, showed one of the weavers, his name's Raul Quispy Rodriguez, and said, would you take a chance? Quispy Raul. <laughs> would you take a chance, you know, would you be willing to do this? And he did, so these are interpretations from printouts of paintings. And um, we did go over some of the palace, but basically, um, it was a collaboration. They were left on their own. I leave pictures and I go back six months later. So, but these are pretty, um, what could I say, analog technology. They're not uh, popping this stuff into a computer no, and, no, and having little people. machines grind this stuff out. This yeah, is all done by all hand. All done by hand. Um, oh, the let's see what, are oh, what's the lining in. like? Oh, it's just the reverse side there. Okay, yeah, that's beautiful. Some of these you can see more of the embroidery. Um, they're done by hand on a loom, and then he is from Ayacucho, so the, the grounds were taken by Ayacucho, and the embroidery was done uh, on top of the grounds. And there's several styles of embroidery in each piece. I can see that. Which oh, I they're beautiful. For, but I have to retrieve those. Um, it's a, it's a, it was a wonderful... A wonderful project. This uh, this ended up with a chacuna because my my patterning's through lace, so 
Yes. But what people, you know, the people actually doing the embroidery we're looking at are, is something they've never seen. So they're looking at, so, say, a print, a printout a from a, a painting. Okay, and then they blow it up a little bit. This was actually maybe my favorite piece in the show. I love the palette on this one. That's actually from a drawing. I think it's uh, from a drawing. Right. Okay, so and I'm uh, going to say zoom in on this because they pull a little chakuna, which is a really an Andean image. Um, which I thought was quite playful, maybe. No, and I so love the uh, kind of like, oh, three-dimensional. I don't understand what I'm seeing, so I'll do the chakuna. That's always nice when uh, kind of misunderstandings or uh, maybe uh, misreading things end up going in another direction and turn out to be real, uh, real interesting in their own right. And this was done on the little. Yeah, the little uh, squiggly lines here are very much like right. your drawing um, there. Well, from a drawing, most, uh, well, I realize most tapestries, you do drawings or because they're easier to interpret for the weaver. So how but, long would say if you were to take your drawing down there and for, what was his name? <laughs> Raul? Um, in, in this, Slick in this Raul. case, it was Raul. Um, to finish he, something like actually, this. He's really an artist in his own right. Does he have people that work for him or does he do, do all this um, himself? Or? It's mostly himself and I believe his brother. And then um, his family and I, Kucho, does um, the embroidery. Wow. Fantastic. And um, my guess is it takes about a month for each one. To wow. finish. The Ayacucho, you have to travel Ayacucho to have the embroidery. So this this particular selection here probably took like a year or something to get them all finished, right? Well, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Okay. <laughs> but I think like half a year. I think six months. Okay. They were, they were, they were really cranking. They were fast. They were fast. They now we'll go, go down the wall and look at some of your drawings. Now, I was noticing, you know, for a long time you were fairly abstract, but now you've got these kind of uh, funky figures sort of popping yes. up in some of these. This is true. That's a nice one. Um, is there a narrative involved in this, or are you just kind of using these as a simple uh, kind of motif that you can build your, your abstract compositions around? Is there a narrative? I think there's a couple of different narratives. <laughs> okay, good. Um, and these are watercolor. These are color pencil, pencil. Watercolor on paper. Ink. Any of that stuff? I don't think there's any ink. Um, this this little, this sort of totemic figure, for instance, is um, comes out of a cardboard box I was using as a stencil. And when I say there's a narrative, um, I don't know. It's just the mind tends to make faces sure. and stories in, you know, a, a, at least mine. It could be a stain on the wall, and suddenly if I look at it long enough, it's changing. Yeah, so yeah I, I know. And eat some mushrooms and toke a little. <laughs> I feel like doobies and that's the narrative. Drink I some mean, mezcal. And this could also be a, like a salamander shape or a lizard okay. shape or, or not, you know. I and also you've got this kind of... Doing uh, this feminizes, you know, these yeah, two exactly, triangles exactly. feminizes. And you've got this kind of a masculine. framing device here with the kind of the curly corners there uh, that you're basic, using. Yeah, this is a vine, it's also a snake, it's also a colorful frame. Um, and what size? These are rabbit, these are all about what sixteen by twelve, something like that. Yes, twelve, yes, sixteen, so. thirteen, so, something like that. What's about mark making? Uh, well, <laughs> I think I saw part of a review that I glanced at. There was at um, two coats of paint, and they were featuring the drawings. And when I came in and saw the show, I was actually very impressed to see. Not only the drawings, but the tapestries, and you've got a selection of major paintings. Yes. Well, I think I covered it one of your shows out at Norte Mar, maybe four or five years ago. And uh, 
think You've been going through some changes, but yeah. I like what's I like what's happening with the paint, the paintings. Uh, for a long time, I was just you know sticking to the stenciling process, yes. keeping a very flat surface. Any of the handwork was just in the grounds. Um, after making the textiles, I, I sort of basically brought my hand back in, just using a tube of paint to draw patterns, which is similar to embroidery. You know, it, it, when you're working, these things start, it's like a... Right, because you get a very kind of a physical line that's uh, kind of almost three-dimensional. Right. The other thing I was going to say is... Uh, I would uh, get the viewers to kind of note the, maybe the relationship between these and some of the tapestries. You know, you do have kind of your, your figures and <clears throat> the patterning is also very important for you. Well, kind of divides the different grounds and figures. And For instance, every tapestry short of the one that's a drawing has yes. a painting that it's based on. And so there's a tapestry of this. Um, in other words, I was going to say is that you know the tapestries are coming back around to form the painting, so that's why I brought In other words, you've got a painting back in. I'm still <laughs> resisting pulling out a bunch of brushes. And, you know, I'm going step by step back into um, my previous mode of painting, which you probably remember. I do remember. <laughs> And, uh, well, one of the things that's nice, excess. yes, <laughs> it takes one to know one. Yeah, uh, also the thing that I liked about the, uh, the tapestries and some of the new paintings is that some of the early work that I saw, you were, you were actually kind of uh, collaging on yes, pom-poms right. and different well, kinds of, uh, of material yeah, material and woven paint. fabrics and, and uh, cords and all kinds of things. Okay. So this little piece of lace uh, I bought in Mexico in front of the um, people of the sun and the moon and it has the S sundial in it. It's just That's great. too fun. <laughs> Not too uh, And how big how big is this? Is this that's five by six feet, something yeah, like that? Maybe a little bigger? Maybe seventy four Uh, see, that's about five feet, maybe a little five, maybe five and a half feet, something like that. Five by five and a half by seven, something. Okay, we'll wrap up looking at this one. Do any of these have titles? Yes, this is called Wave Spell. Wave Spell. Okay. Are you just using regular spray paint on these, or do you have a uh, airbrush that you're yeah, you're blowing I'm through the stencils with? Mostly it's Montana spray paint, the sort of art spray paints that and Belkin. Um, I don't have an airbrush. Too much cleaning involved. Yeah, I, I can I can see that. I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> You like the sound of the marble rattling around there inside the, the can, too. Well, the tip's clogged, but there's a fix for that. Okay, Tamara Gonzalez, tell us the name of the show again. Omateo. Omateo. Yes. Okay. Here at Klaus von Nixagen Gallery. I think it's 50. February 12th. <laughs> February 12th, 54. Ludlow Street here on the Lower East Side. And as we always say at the end, thank you, Kate. Woo! Give it up, Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for the time, Thank you. Any donations are appreciated. Those that can't get thank you anyway. I hope you all have a safe, happy, and blessed evening. My name is Big Sam 16, a small partner Marvin. Thank you all so much for listening and have a great night. Oh yeah, my name is not John. Thank you, Cece.